if you have boards where you require a mandate or a, a and you require a, the token woman to be there, there already is a lot of resentment from guys and, and a lot of the establishment in terms of saying, oh, you only just want that woman there. Um, she's not qualified, she's not, she's just there because you put a number there. You have to prove that, especially in Hong Kong, you have to prove that this person is a qualified person, has the experience, and it's merit-based. And from that, you can get results. I give you an example of a major listed company in Hong Kong. When we first, I, I sit on the board of the Women's Foundation. We st first started talking to the chairman of the board. He had no women on the board. We worked on him for a year, and we explained to him the merits of why putting women on boards was very important. And also, we convinced him that there were good people out there. And this was the big thing that he could not um, come to terms with. He didn't feel that there were qualified women out there that could do a board job. Um, and we convinced him to actually have a headhunter in the process. And I'm pleased to announce that, and you can see it, um, he, he has uh, announced two women on his board in one appointment. So out of a group of 10 persons, it's two women on the board. So by talking about it, which Irene brought up in her CDWI um, uh, results research paper, by getting the conversations out there, by selling people, and as Cassandra has said, changing culture, this is the way that we combat against the tokenism, and it's not like it's forced down somebody's throat in terms of being um, put there because you just happen to be a woman.